Hey guys, what's up? It's Natalie here, also known as Half Breed Gypsy, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new, I am also new to YouTube, and I just started my own kombucha brewing company, Half Breed Gypsy Co. So, in this video coming up, you're going to see my entire process of starting brewing kombucha at home. When I first started this journey, I had no idea what it would take to create a SCOBY. Um, I didn't know it was as easy as it is, so that's what I hope you guys can learn and gain from this video is realizing like, wow, I can do this at home, it's super fun, it's really easy, and it doesn't require a lot of money either. So, um, before we dive into this video, I do want to say if you could please subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below so we can connect, and also go ahead and follow my Instagram page, Half Breed Gypsy. I post daily updates on what I'm brewing, what I'm flavoring, what ingredients I'm using, and I also post a lot of videos of what I eat day to day. So yeah, go on over and let's get into the video. Okay, hello and welcome back to my channel. Just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, hey guys. So today I am on the hunt. I'm on the hunt for the perfect mason jar to start making my scoby for my kombucha. 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 <laughs> the guy that we were watching on YouTube yesterday, that's how he said it. But yeah, uh, lately I've just had an infatuation with creating my own kombucha, and we'll see where this goes from there. But yeah, today is SCOBY day. We got the Starbucks. Nice. You know, it's not Philly coffee, but it'll do. It'll do, pig. It'll do. All right guys, time to make the SCOBY. First, you're gonna wanna boil water and add eight to 10 tea bags. Stir that up really good, and then you're gonna add one cup of sugar into the mixture. I decided to pour it into the jar first and then add the tea on top of it so that I made sure that it mixed really well. I then had to brew a little bit more tea because I wanted to make sure that I filled the canister. I'm using half a gallon here. Dump in your probiotics and you're ready to go. Yes, they're in there. They're floating in there. Oh wow, that was some. That was a good close up of the scope. Good. Nice. Nice. Okay. Right. Throw it in there and hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Wish me luck. See if the scope. My little scopes. Okay, guys. It has officially been one month and a couple of days since I started my scope. I have not touched it. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like now. Okay, so I've been keeping it in this cabinet here. It's very dry, it's dark, everything the SCOBY needs. Here we go, moment of truth. And it looks pretty healthy. Like I am very, very proud of myself for how well this turned out for my first time ever making a SCOBY. Oh, sorry, a little shake there. We are just gonna really, really, really wash our hands right now. All right. Oh, it's a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Let me get a spoon. My trusty little baby spoon. All right. Um, is that like supposed to be on it? I'm not really sure. Somebody help, somebody tell me. Okay, for the cam. Can somebody leave in the comments below like if that was the right thing to do or not? Cause I'm really not sure. Okay guys, so in this next part, I'm gonna show you what I do with the tea that I brewed, that I grew the SCOBY in. I actually use some of this for my SCOBY hotel, and then I also put two cups of this into the new brew of tea that I'm gonna use 
for my second ferment. So right now we're on the first fermenting phase where you actually put the SCOBY into the brewed tea and let it sit for about 10, roughly 10 days. All right, so I kind of had to step away from the SCOBY for a little bit, let this tea really get down to room temperature. And now I'm finally going to put the SCOBY in and hopefully just leave it alone for a few days. And then hopefully it will be ready to be flavored in another six to 10 days. Okay. I'm going to just literally Plop this guy right in there and nice. Let it sit for another six to ten days. So I bought these four bottles online. These are each like 34 ounces each. Um, they're pretty good sizes. So comes with this really cool funnel. It's a really good purchase, honestly. This All of this was like 20 bucks. So really excited about that. All right, so this kombucha is phase two. It's been, it has the scoby in it. It's been in there for about, seven days so i'm going to get the scope out right now and transfer that somewhere else and then use the tea for sec for phase two wait what do i do with this top layer oh all right interesting let's get your reaction shot for that oh i did not know what i was doing okay look at that wow here we go oh yeah you're right i need the funnel there you go. Good assistance. That's a sick funnel. All right, here we go. Are you zooming in on this? I'm zooming. Right here, put the camera here. Got okay, good footage. Ooh! Ooh! Wow, it's flowing really so- Oh! oh whoa. Whoa. I don't think that was supposed to happen. <coughs> it was. Nice! <laughs> this big chunk of goop came out of the of the nozzle but now it's like it's all pretty smooth <coughs> all right look at that kombucha stuff Yuck. all right all right there's one so this has mango pineapple ginger and i'm gonna put a little bit of cayenne in it a little bit of cayenne. Cayenne pepper. See, it wasn't focused, but sorry. Right. We got the laboratory over here. All right. Close that up. First kombucha bottle ever done right here. You're looking at her. I feel like I should put more um, cayenne pepper in it. Maybe you could use cayenne pepper. One, what's it called that looks good? Nice. All right, let's keep it going. So we have enough here to make 
each one of these bottles is 33 ounces. 33? Yeah, so I have four 33 ounce bottles, which is like a liter. Well, now it has to ferment for another four to five days, and then after that, you can drink it. Like a real process. Yeah. It's a whole lot of cayenne. I'm not being very, uh, you know, I really like cayenne pepper, so we're just putting it in there. We're just putting her in there. All right, number two. And that is airtight, let me tell you. That is airtight. It, it passed number, numerous checks. And this is another mango, pineapple, ginger, cayenne. All right. All right. I think we're good. I really wanted to film this to show you guys specifically my taste testing of kombucha. Um, it's been four days since it's been flavored and it is very, very um, carbonated at the moment. So I've been popping the bottles and burping them as people call it. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys now me taste testing everything. Okay, hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. We have mango, pineapple, ginger, Pineapple. We have mango, pineapple, ginger, cayenne. That's bottle number one. Let me put this stuff up here. This is kind of our like tray of disinfecting stuff for, because we are in quarantine for the COVID-19 and you know, it's a little scary, but kombucha must be brewed. Okay, number two, <laughs> ginger, pineapple, mango, cayenne. The exact same thing as the other one, but there's more mango and pineapple in this one than in this one. No, I didn't measure. I did the eyeball method. So, we'll see. The third bottle is just mango and cayenne. And for four, this was all that I had left. It's pineapple cayenne. So, gotta burp these things a little bit. I burped them earlier today, so they really shouldn't be that gassy this ooh so yeah woo wee you guys see that it's crazy this one has been the worst of them so let's hope it doesn't explode everywhere right now ah! take one set one batch one wow wow like, it has like a a very sweet gingery taste and I think that's because I put like so much fruit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, try this. It's actually really good. All right. Wow, see. this is a success. Oh, if she takes three sips before she offers. Oh one. my gosh. I can't believe you made that. I can't believe I made that either. You know, the cayenne pepper is a good amount of cayenne pepper. It kind of holds it all together. I thought it was going to be too spicy and not really good. I cannot really believe I made that. Yeah. First try. Boom. Hell yeah. All right. This is the, you've seen it first, guys. This is Natalie's kombucha line. Cheers. Here's the starter. I'm so happy about this. Nice. Wow. This one's like super concentrated. Which one was that? This is just the pineapple cayenne. Okay, is that three or four? Four, okay. Four. And also had extra space in there, so maybe yeah. that will do something. This one's definitely gonna be, well, the first one I thought was gonna be really carbonated and it's not, so let's see what this one turns out like. Okay, yeah, pineapple and cayenne. This is what you guys gotta try. Mild. <laughs> Mild. That was, hey, that's a reaction if you've ever seen one right there. But it's so good. Taste it. Haven't done my taxes, I'm too turned up. You guys are seeing this first. I'm taste testing this for the first time. Oh my gosh. It's actually so good. 
I knew it. I knew it. I knew this was gonna be. Okay guys, so I would definitely say that the basil, cucumber, blueberry, blueberry, basil, cucumber, whichever way, um, was a success. I really, really love this. Like, I like this more than my last batch. The sour aftertaste is excellent. And yeah, I'm just very, very proud of it. The blueberry, same thing. It has a very sour, vinegary taste that kombucha should have. Um, this one's not as carbonated as this one is, and that's just because there wasn't an, as much fruit. Yeah, I'm really proud of these, and thank you guys for watching. Mmm.